Hi, my name is Ken from the NetBeans documentation team, and in this screencast, I will demonstrate how you can use NetBeans IDE when developing HTML5 applications. The beta release of NetBeans IDE 7.3 introduces improved tooling for working with style sheets and JavaScript and consuming web services in HTML5 applications. In this screencast, I demonstrate the new HTML5 project type. I show how to create an HTML5 project and view the project in a browser. I show how the NetBeans plugin for the Chrome browser enables you to easily work with HTML5 projects and quickly navigate to page elements in your source code. When you modify CSS properties in the IDE, the browser is dynamically updated with the new styles. In a subsequent screencast, I will demonstrate how to use the JavaScript editor and debugger when working with JavaScript files and some of the code completion available in the JavaScript editor. I will also show how the IDE can help you in creating an HTML5 client for a RESTful web service. The new project wizard has a new project type that creates an HTML5 project that combines cascading style sheets and JavaScript to create complex web applications that may be viewed on various devices. An HTML5 project can be created from scratch or based on a project template. In this screencast, I will use a custom template to create the project. The project template contains instructions for generating the project, including the HTML and JavaScript libraries that are used in the project. The new project wizard contains a panel that enables you to select from a list of commonly used libraries and automatically add the JavaScript libraries to the project. I will add some backbone libraries that will be used later when I add a JavaScript client for a REST web service to the application. It is possible to select the version of the library that is added to the project. The template already specifies a number of libraries and the backbone libraries has now been added to the list. When I click finish in the wizard, the IDE generates the project based on the template. In the project's properties window, I can modify the site root and test folders and project encoding. I can also add more JavaScript libraries to the project in the JavaScript files panel. In the run panel of the properties window, I can select the browser that I want to use to view the application. In this screencast, I will use the Chrome browser and the NetBeans plugin. The NetBeans plugin for the Chrome browser enables the IDE and the browser to communicate with each other so that I can quickly locate DOM elements in the project and instantly view changes to the style sheets and easily debug JavaScript files. Editor support for working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files has been improved. For example, when I select the name of the class attribute of an element, the IDE highlights other occurrences of the class name in the file. If I select an element, the IDE can help me locate the line that opens or closes that element even when the element is outside the visible editing area. The editor offers code completion and docs for HTML5 elements. When I start typing the footer element in the editor, the IDE offers suggestions for the HTML5 footer element and attributes. The editor also provides code completion for HTML entities. For now, I will leave the rules for the footer class undefined. Now that I have added a footer to the HTML file, I want to see how the page looks in the browser. I click the Run button in the toolbar to open the page in the browser. To use some of the advanced development tools, I specified the Chrome browser with the NetBeans extension that is bundled with the IDE. Because this is the first time I have used it, the IDE prompts me to install the extension first. I click on Locate in the dialog box to show the location of the extension. I only need to drag the extension into the settings page of the browser to add the extension. After the extension is installed, I clear the dialog box and the page opens in my browser. In the browser, I can see my page and the yellow bar at the top of the window that tells me that the NetBeans plugin is debugging the tab. When I resize the window, I can see how the layout of the page changes according to the size of the window. I now resize the windows of the IDE in the browser so that I can see how changes to the file in the IDE are automatically rendered in the browser. If I change the text of the project name from Project Demo to Project Easel and save the file, the page is automatically reloaded in the browser and I can see that the text was updated. In the URL bar of the browser, there is a NetBeans icon that lets me select from common screen sizes for various devices including tablets and mobile devices, or to define a custom size. A single application might be viewed on various devices with different viewing areas 
and the plugin enables me to quickly check how the page will appear. When I select the screen size in the menu, the browser resizes and the page layout changes to reflect the new screen size. Here I look at how the page will look on a tablet and on a mobile device. If I want to adjust the rules for elements in my layout, I can use the select mode to quickly locate an element in my code. When I activate the select mode in the NetBeans menu, I can hover over various elements in the page layout and the element will be identified in the DOM tree in the IDE. I can select one of the images to quickly locate and modify the styling of the element. If I select an image in the browser, the IDE displays the location of the element in the navigator window and opens the CSS styles window that displays the style rules of the element. I can then use the rules editor to modify the rules. If I modify the rule for the width of the element and hit return, the element is automatically updated in the browser. If I want to modify the style rules for the footer element that I added earlier, I can use the select mode to help me quickly find the element in the DOM tree. If I select go to source in the pop-up menu for the element, the ID opens the HTML file with the cursor at the line in the source code for the element. When I created the element earlier, I created a new class name for the element, but I did not add the new class name to the style sheet. If I click the hint in the left margin of the editor, the IDE can create a rule for the class name footer in the style sheet. If I control click the class name, the IDE opens the style sheet at the line containing the new rule. I can now use the CSS code completion in the editor to create the rule for the new class name. When I modify the rule in the style sheet to change the font size, the color, and margin of the element, I can see that the element is updated in the browser. I do not need to save the style sheet or rerun the project. Thank you for watching this screencast of HTML5 support in the IDE. In the next screencast, I will demonstrate how the IDE supports editing and debugging JavaScript files and how I can use the IDE to help me consume web services in the application.